When I got to school freshman year at Yale, I felt like I wasn't playing my best and I wasn't being included on my team the way that I had hoped to be included. I thought about leaving, I thought about quitting hockey um, and what it would be like to be a regular student at Yale. When you're 19, 20, and this has been a piece of your life for all 20 years, it's hard to let go and hard to accept that the game didn't necessarily love you back. I'm Soroya Tinker. I play defense for the Toronto Six in the Premier Hockey Federation, formerly known as the National Women's Hockey League. I grew up playing hockey within Oshawa. I was in gymnastics and dance to start, always taller than everybody else, so hockey came up next. At first, I realized that I was different in the arena simply because I was a girl. When I played, I was one of two girls within my specific league, having to get changed in, in a different locker room or in the janitor room, whatever it may be. And then later on, probably around the age of 12, I realized that I was a black female, not just a female in the game, but I was gonna have to overcome these barriers of being a black woman. My first instance of overt racism occurred probably when I was around 12. I was joking around with my teammates in the dressing room and we were all kind of standing up saying jokes um, and I stood up to say my piece and one of my teammates replied with shut up you stupid and she proceeded to call me the n-word. And as a 12 year old I didn't know how to react. I quickly left the dressing room and I felt like the only person that I could express this to was my dad. I think that was when I really realized that I was going to encounter so many more challenges than, than just the other girls in my dressing room. When I got to school freshman year at Yale, I felt like I wasn't playing my best. I was 10 hours away from home, I was in a different country, and I wasn't being included on my team the way that I had hoped to be included. I thought about leaving, I thought about quitting hockey, and that was a really dark point for me. While I was at Yale, I was actually the first and only um, a black player to ever play at Yale hockey, uh, men's or women's. Come my senior year, we had another black player join the team. Kirsten Good came in as a freshman, and I very quickly realized how important it was for me to be there for her. Right off the bat, that first night that we, we got to hang out, uh, I realized that she was going to be my little sister. She came to me for everything, and I enjoyed being there for her. After being drafted, I realized as a professional athlete now, I was gonna have a voice. And there's gonna be little girls watching me, there's gonna be people watching you in general. They wanna hear what's going on, they wanna hear our opinions, and I think that that's something that's very valuable. And as an athlete, I think that we should all uh, take control of that and realize our potential and realize what we can offer. I think that's completely why I play today. I think in the past I played angry because I felt like I had something to prove. I needed to prove people wrong. I needed my stat sheet to look as best as it could. And moving forward, I think with my new purpose, I realize that it's great for me to continue to play because it's opening up these doors for these little black girls behind me. My mom told me about Black Girl Hockey Club and said that I should get involved. So I started volunteering on the scholarship committee and reading and viewing all these little girls' scholarship applications, their questions, their essays that they wrote. And I just had so much fun. And I loved seeing the little girls that I was once in their position and um, they're able to receive these funds and you know be able to fund their career, their equipment and whatever else they need. And with that, I decided to start my own mentorship program, Soroya Strong. And through Soroya Strong, we're connected with Black Girl Hockey Club, and I mentor girls all across North America. Currently, we've got about 55 girls in our program. With Black Girl Hockey Club, I got heavily involved my senior year. We give out scholarships every semester, so three to four times a year. And we also host webinars, panels, and create a sense of community for black people inside of hockey. Ever since I met her, it was life-changing. She inspired me to be a better hockey player. The community that she fostered is one that I never knew that I needed. I never knew how amazing and just welcomed I would feel in this community, having people that understand my experiences both on and off the ice. It's meant a lot to have someone always looking out for me, taking big stances in hockey and speaking up for so many people who didn't have a voice. 
and she's opening so many doors for girls like us coming up where we would never have had this opportunity if it wasn't for her. I think she's paving the way for all five of us here, uh, for Black Girls Hockey and for people of color, um, that we can join the game and that it's important for us to play different sports. I think it's so important that we continue to push that community and that family atmosphere in hockey. And I think that it's so important that we do view our teammates as our family members. She's traveled the world, she's played for Team Canada, she went to Yale, and now she's got her mentorship and all these girls looking up to her and people all over hearing her voice and having her speak out is, is just amazing. So we're very proud of her. For myself, I think as long as I can reach one girl, I think that my job has been a success. It's the hope that we can expand and really allow our reach to go as far as it possibly can to create this community and allow BIPOC individuals into the sport of hockey.